God wants to secure your gate, there are three things He does. That's what I'll share with you. My emphasis tonight is to raise gatekeepers. Men who can secure the borders of their heart from the infiltration of spirits so that they can serve the living God. Because too many thrones are empty in the spirit. Too many mantles are floating in the spirit. Nobody to wield them. Renard Bonke is gone. Billy Graham is gone. Reverend Dr. Maupai is old. You have not heard of any other, any other person doing crusades. Every day you still make reference to the men that did it 50 years ago. And some are already living. Nobody is rising up. Because it's not about following in the natural. What is the state of your gate? The spirit that walked with that man. Can the spirit have koinonia with you? Because what you see as a crusade is actually the overflow of the intercourse that existed between that spirit and that man. The same way you see a woman after nine months, the stomach is large. The large stomach is a testimony of an intercourse that took place in the secret. So the crusade is not organization. The crusade is an overflow, a manifestation of an intercourse. So even if you go and receive the man's handkerchief, you can't do what he's doing. Because the crusade is a river flowing from an intercourse. That's why we can't find replacements because the gates are porous. We are having intercourse with different spirits. What comes out of us are they are bastards. Every time you look at a man and what his life creates or manifests is not consistent to a dimension in Christ. That is a bastard. He has had intercourse with another spirit. So what you see is a testimony of the spirit he communes with. We carry suit and tie, but we can't represent God. All men see is the color of our suit and the way our ties are knotted. But in the days of John the Baptist, he was in Kamer's skin. But when he cried, the whole city gathered. The whole city gathered. Our communion is shallow because our gates are porous. How does God secure the gate? The first is by the mystery of drawing. You have wandered away. You have journeyed away from God. The way He brings you to drink of that eternal waters of His presence is to draw you. That's the first thing the Spirit of God does to a man if he wants to secure the gates of his soul so that he can develop stature to bring government. When the Spirit of God begins to draw a man, it means God is about to begin a new thing. But he cannot walk with a bastard. He cannot walk with a foreigner. He said in Luke 180 that he was in the wilderness until the day of his showing forth unto Israel. It is not about oratory. It is the power that is invested there. But that power is an entrustment because your faithfulness has been proven in the place of your work with that spirit. So he begins to draw you. If God draws a man, then the man is about to return to the place of integrity in the spirit. Because it's not by power is not by man, is by his spirit. So in Zechariah chapter 2, verse 13, he said, Be still, all flesh, the God of heaven is about to rise from his habitation. So he silences your flesh and he begins to draw you. You begin to hear again the echoes of eternity. And as you respond to those drawings, he brings you deeper. As he brings you deeper, what he's doing is that he's severing you from the world system. Once upon a time, you were a fan and an addict of football. And the angels that work with you come to you by 4 p.m. But unfortunately, all your matches are by 4 p.m. So you are in the middle. Either to go the way of the wooing of this spirit of the world. Or to go in the direction of God. When the influence of God becomes stronger. And even though there's a match by 4 but something is drawing you to the prayer meeting. It means an alignment pattern is beginning to be established. The Holy Ghost is beginning to attempt 
to deny the other spirit of possession. So he's beginning to draw you from his hand. So in John chapter 6 verse 44, he said, no man can come to me. This is not a zeal. This is not motivation. This is an economy in the spirit. He said, no man can come to me except the Father draws him. God begins to pull you from within you. It's like a re-engineering of your sets of appetite because he's beginning to silence flesh. He said in John 12, 32, when I am lifted up, I withdraw. Spirits draw men. They draw you out of the conclave of darkness where you have been discipled. The culture and the civilization of the world has taken over you. The way the spirit begins is to pull you out of it. It brings you into a new civilization. So he said, kiss me with the kisses of thy mouth. For thy name is as the precious ointment that is poured forth. He said, draw us and we shall pursue after thee. Where you are standing is what determines what you build. So what the spirit does is that he begins to woo you. The same seductive strategy the devil used to draw you, God brings his own dimension. And as he woos you, a point comes where you become alien to the world system. The same star lager beer that you drank and gave you pleasure, all of a sudden becomes a bitter heart. The same football that you, you watch and you sleep there, all of a sudden, you lose the taste because your taste board are being re-engineered. As the spirit draws you into his energy, he begins to reconfigure you. The engineering of that spirit reconfigures your appetite. That's why it commands the flesh to be still because the man is returning to koinonia. He said, we will not remember the testimony of the wine for thy love is sweeter than wine. We have found another appetite. And as you begin to touch that river, what that river does is that it begins to mingle with your river and resonance begins to take place. And after a while, only that spirit becomes your lost. As you wake up in the morning, he's your lost. As you wake up in the night, he's your lost. Then the spirit that once had you, when he shouts, you don't hear anymore. You have entered into another economy. And when this spirit secures you, what it does is that he gives you new laws. That's when you journey from drawing into consecration. The new laws he gives you are the keys that secure the gates of your heart. A believer may be drawn, but if he has no consecration, he is still porous. After a while, that energy will diminish. You see where Christianity is beyond sensation. You can come for a meeting and receive loud prophetic word and gyrate and you will go nowhere. Because these ones are the labors of the spirit. Some it may take two years, some it may take ten years to be drawn. And some it may take a lifetime to establish a consecration. But blessed is the man that journeys into the gates of God by reason of his response to the drawing of the spirit and is able to establish a consecration. When you talk about law, they say you are being legalist. That's because they don't know the way of the spirit. There is no strong man without laws. Not one. When he secures you by wooing you, sometimes he tells you, fast thrice every week. He will not tell you where it will end. The day you violate it, you open the gate. This is not a Bible study. This is life in the spirit. Sometimes it tells you, for one year, give every time you get an amount of money, say, give it. Because all those areas where he gives you consecration are the poorest part of your heart, where the other spirit that wooed you mounted his weapons. Some is lost for money. So he will get you to give like a madman for 10 years. Until that loss dies. Even when you have money, you don't know what to do with it again. Then say, now you have, you, you, you have secured that gate. Even if that spirit comes, money don't move you anymore. So if he commits anything to your hand, they can't use money to negotiate it. If he doesn't give you that consecration, even if he gives you the power to deliver Ghana, you will exchange it for bread and wine. The same way Adam 
exchange the power over the universe for a, a, a fruit. So God will not waste precious things. He said, give not precious things to swine. They will trample upon it and tumble. So you are not a swine because you are a pig. You are a swine because you have no value for spiritual things. And in order not to waste spiritual resources, what he will do is that he will mount consecration guards over the areas of your soul that have become porous. Until you pass those tests, he cannot release the power to establish kingdom to your hand. So we don't establish apostolic government by impartation. We establish apostolic government by exposing people to process. Until men come to a point where they master their consecration, they will have no power to establish the government of God. This is where committers are given to men. This is where we enter into inheritance. And blessed is a man that travels with God beyond.